if I look at your cell phone, again, it's 100,000 to a million. Um, if your microwave is on, I'm gonna see something massive. The, the Sonos or any of the companies for Bluetooth speakers, really high. You have to unplug your Bluetooth. They're just pinging all the time. I mean, I'll see 60,000, 100,000 microwatts per meter squared walking around people's houses or my friend's houses trying to get it down. So I walk into the Airbnb, for instance, and the first thing I do, one of the first things, where's the Wi-Fi router, right? And when I go to sleep, I turn it off. I mean, you can ask Jimmy, my guy who's here with me, like I was texting him last night, where's the Wi-Fi router? I'm gonna turn it off tonight, right? And you'll see like, it will go down. In Los Angeles, the background is like one to 2,000 because there's so much, but I can get it from one to 2,000 to like 100 or 150 just by turning off the Wi-Fi router in the house. And then, you know, every, nobody's cell phone is on. I unplug the Bluetooth speakers and I'm not sleeping next to my computer or my phone and my phone is on airplane mode. So you can really, really mitigate the RF in your house, but it takes work. Yeah. All right, if we come back, come back to sleep, because I mean, I could go on the EMF stuff forever. But that, the reason but I was it, saying that yeah. is because you do all of that before you sleep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how you create the right sleep environment. But let's go, um, let's go diet for, uh, like yeah. for sleep here. Is there... What are your, what's your, uh, your take on glycine? There's a lot of interesting evidence on glycine for sleep. Yeah, I think the evidence is pretty solid. Yeah. You know, um, I take magnesium three and eight before I go to sleep. That's the one that works best for me. But I think some form of magnesium before you sleep seems to have some pretty good data yeah. and either glycinate or three and eight works great. What about even like the, the they've seen there's some stuff on like just straight up three grams of pure glycine. Yeah. Uh, I've seen yeah. people do it. Yeah. It's yeah. sweet. I mean, <laughs> Glycine is an interesting amino acid, you know? The only thing I know with glycine that you just have to be aware of is that if you have polymorphisms for methylation, excess glycine consumes methyl groups. So you, it interacts with methylation sometimes. So that's the only thing to be aware of. If you don't have polymorphisms with methylation, you're not gonna have an issue with it. But I have to be a little careful with glycine because I'm also, I have MTHFR, okay. yeah. I take a methylated B vitamin. And so I think that if I take too much glycine, I will, it appears that I sort of like pull methyl groups from other things into the glycine because excess glycine is, um, uh, it uses methyl groups when it's, yeah. What about, uh, you know, obviously you're, you're having quite a bit of carbohydrates, quite a bit of fruit, quite a bit of honey. 